Okay, I wasn't making a part three, but now I am. Um, playing around in Winlink, I found different things, and I was looking for other things, and I found this. Uh, one of the issues we have with Winlink is if we generate an ICS 309 or 214 or something like that, and we want to send it to Joe at the Red Cross or the EMA, they will get a garbled up text message, which I'll show you real quick. Uh, they will get something like this. Uh, I have to open a notepad. So they will get this. And when they try to open it, they will get errors because the file is meant to be used with WinLink, not with just a regular operating system email. So I was in the form settings looking for something else, and I found this, send forms as PDF files. Now understand, this is going to make your message bigger. That means if you're sending it over the radio, it's going to take longer. So you want to use it sparingly. So what it does in short is, if they are a WinLink user using WinLink Express, it sends them the ICS that you saw where it popped up in the browser. If they are not a WinLink user, it generates a PDF file and it sends that to them instead of that XML file. So I'm going to, the other thing that I found where I would said you need to, you should have a, 309 running, I found this. So you can do this and you can set it up and it is how to generate it. Um, so that was where I found it was looking for something related to that. Uh, so I will do Another new message, select my template. Um, this time I'll show you a weather for weather one. Okay. So again, if you have information you can load it up. Um, so if you already have some weather report, you can load that up. Okay. If you click your date and time, it'll prompt it for the current date and time. Uh, you can put in your location. I might as well put in my address because it's showing you everything right there anyways. Uh, mine automatically gets this based on information I've saved somewhere else. So if you have a GPS working, it'll get it for you. All right. So we're going to say we're using Imperial. It is clear. Uh, temperature is like, I don't know, 45, we'll say. It's kind of cool. 38, dew point, 32. Uh, we'll say it's 29. Steady. Uh, we'll say. 10 miles an hour, and I actually used an anemometer for that, and it's coming from the east. And we'll say 15, uh, we'll say 17, just because I can. There's zero, 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 zero. 
if you're in a national weather, you can set it up in there. Um, You can save your data, submit it, same process. Go ahead and close that, go ahead and minimize that, go ahead and put in your call signs. Uh, we're going to do All right, post it to the outbox. Now, if I go over to my outbox, um, so you see I've got two of them in there. I've got this one, which is the one going to Scott and Bruce. And then I have a larger version of it, which is going to Scott and me. So I'll open my session. Do the start. Bam. They're gone. I don't have any axe. Alrighty. So it's done. I can close it. Okay. Go over to Outlook. Do a quick check, and I should have this wonderful message coming through, but I don't yet, so we'll pause. All right, so I opened the message up in Outlook, and here's what it looks like. I have the form data that I just showed you where, if I preview it, it's that. This stuff, there's, you know, doesn't really work. It's the XML file. But if I open this and preview it, it is the same thing that you will see in a browser. So that's how the generate is PDF for internet addresses works. Um, obviously, there's a caveat to this, which is if you are sending it over radio, you may or may not be able to send that one at the same time as everything else because it's going to take a lot more time. Ten minute, if you're on the unregistered VARA, it's slow. If you're on registered VARA, it's faster, but it's still going to take nine to ten minutes. So you have to play sparingly. Um, one last thing that I want to show you is an Arden thing. So if you do not have internet access and don't have a radio, but you have the Arden mesh set up and someone on the Arden mesh is either set up as a, re a RMS station going radio to radio or they have internet, you click Telnet mm -hmm. Post Office. Click Open Session. Click Add Server. Update our Mesh Node List. Um, update Mesh Nodes. Okay, so it says 15 of them were advertised. So that's because I am on a tunnel. Um, I do not see, oh, there he is. This one is Scott, if I remember correctly. So in order to get it to work, I actually have to put it in his IP address. 
because Wi-Fi router.local.mesh is not advertised on this thing. So I save. I click start. I am connecting to Scott. I just connected to Scott over the Arden mesh. And I sent and received anything I had waiting to go and come back. And then it's done. So that's how you do a Telnet post office to post office over the Arden mesh. And that is everything that I need to demonstrate.